All right, so I've redrawn the graph from the previous example just to make a little bit more room. And what we've got so far is the original graph and the a tree version of the graph that we built by search, uh, some kind of either depth first, breadth first, any kind of search actually will do as long as we, we now have these green edges pointing downward and these red non-tree edges connecting uh, nodes that, that need to be connected if, uh, if the edge wasn't actually part of this tree. Then we post-ordered the nodes and now what do we do next? We now compute the number of descendants for each node in the graph and the number of descendants is the number of nodes that are either the node or reachable from the node by following green edges only. So it's easiest, easiest to start at the bottom here. F has just the, the node itself and no descendants, so it's got a number of descendants of one. Same thing with G. E has one descendant, one descendant plus itself for three. D has the three descendants of E plus itself for four. C has the four descendants of D plus itself is five. B has just itself and A has B's descendants, C's descendants, plus itself for seven. So the next thing we're going to compute is for each of the nodes, we're going to con consider the set of nodes that are descendants of the node or reachable from the descendants of the node by one hop of a non-tree edge. And of all those nodes that are reachable, we're going to look at the post-order value that is the smallest. We'll call that L. So in the case of F, F has itself and it also can reach G. The smallest value there is 2. G has no descendants, but it can reach by one red edge F. So the smallest of these values, 2 and 3, is 2. E has F and G in itself that it can reach and no other nodes by non-tree edges. And the smallest of those numbers is 2. D can reach all of these nodes and itself. But also by a non-tree edge, it can reach this node. And the smallest of those numbers is 1. C can reach all of these nodes, and through one of those nodes, one tree edge gets it to one. B is values itself as one, so that's going to be the smallest. And A includes everything, so that's going to include the one, so that'll be the smallest. H is the same idea, except of those that same set that we computed for L, we want to know the largest value. For G, between F and G, the largest value is three. For E, between E, F, and G, the largest value is 4. For D, D, E, F, G, and B reachable by a red edge, the largest value is itself 5. C, same set, but we're adding in C now, and the largest value becomes 6. And A's set contains everybody, so that's going to include itself with a value of 7. All right, now we've decorated these nodes with lots of interesting numbers. Now we can get to the last step. So given all these nicely decorated nodes, we now have a rule for figuring out which ones are the bridge edges. And this is the rule. All the bridge edges are the ones that are green. They have to be tree edges. And the green number is less than or equal to black number. And the red number is bigger than the blue number minus the black number. Or in words, the H value has to be less than or equal to the post order value. The lowest value has to be bigger than the number of descendants minus the post order value. So apart from the fact that it's not immediately obvious why this is the right rule, let's apply it to the tree to see what gets picked out. So what we're doing here is we're looking at each green edge and we're checking the numbers on the, on the downward part of the edge. So here's a green edge and let's look at the numbers here and see if they, they fit the pattern. We need the green number to be less than or equal to the black number, so that doesn't work. All right, here's another green edge. We need the green number to be less than or equal to the black number. Oh, that works. So the red number needs to be bigger than the difference between the black and the blue. So the black and the blue, the difference is two, the red number is two, so that, that doesn't work. All right, next edge to check is this one. So we need to check, is green less than or equal to black? Yes. Is red bigger than black minus blue? Two is bigger than one, so yes. So this edge has been identified as a tree edge. That's the right answer, and none of the other edges are tree edges, but let's just check them just to be sure. For this edge, we, have, we need green to be less than or equal to black, which we have, and we need red to be bigger than the difference between blue and black, but one is not bigger than one, so this edge is out. How about this guy? We need green less than or equal to black, yes. We need red bigger than the difference, no. Green number is five because the D node is reachable by a non-tree edge. All right, so green less than or equal to black, no. All right, well that's it, those are all the edges. So in this example, anyway, the one edge that the algorithm finds is exactly the bridge edge. Can we get a handle on why this works? It seems kind of magic at this point. 